إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله Dear viewers, brothers and sisters in Islam, welcome to the 18th, number 18, episode of the series Path to Salvation. Dear viewers, brothers and sisters in Islam, in this series of episodes, we are addressing the two concepts of salvation, uh, which is uh, in Christianity and in Islam. Uh, the two ways of salvation for us to get cleansed from our sins. Uh, so far in previous episodes, we have furnished the concept in Christianity, uh, which circles around the fact that Allah subhanahu wa well, it is a fact for them, but for us, it is really an argument uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came down from the throne uh, into the flesh of his son Isa. Uh, I'm just conveying what they believe. And allowed humanity to crucify him for their sins. And whoever uh, holds uh, belief in that formula, in that concept, uh, will be automatically saved from the sins. Uh, of course, we refuted uh, the whole uh, idea and we mentioned in previous episodes so many reasons that this is never happened. Uh, of course, we did this in a very uh, respectful way. Um, at the end of the day, we do not force people. We can only uh, explain to them the way. And if Allah wills, he will guide them. Uh, but we started uh, in episodes, maybe five, six episodes already, uh, furnishing the concept in Islam. And we stressed the fact that uh, means uh, to expiate your sins in Islam uh, must come uh, on the basis of Tawheed. Uh, meaning without Tawheed, don't even hope for salvation. Don't even talk about sins. La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah is the notarization for uh, de your deeds to be accepted to begin with, good deeds, and for having a chance for your sins to be expiated or forgiven. Uh, we mentioned that Ibn Taymiyyah, Tayyib Allahu Tharah, wa Rahimah, compiled ten means to expiate our sins. Uh, we mentioned and we addressed already the first three, uh, which is calamities, uh, basically hardships, uh, disasters, uh, which inflict a Muslim in this world. They do indeed expiate for his or her sins. And we asked this question, what if a Muslim still dies with sins? Then possibly for certain sins, major, uh, of course, if Allah wills, the Muslim, this particular Muslim who is guilty of these sins and he failed to repent. And if Allah wills, uh, he may experience uh, punishment in the grave. But again, at the end of the day, we look at this punishment uh, in a way it does expiate the sins uh, of a Muslim. Uh, 
uh, then what if he still rises in the day of resurrection with sins? Uh, then we mentioned that uh, the anxiety and fear, uh, the distress, and also uh, certain sins uh, a Muslim may receive punishment for, uh, all of this anxiety, fear, distress, the punishment for certain uh, sins or some sins left over, uh, or maybe he may have to go to the hellfire for a while, but at the end of the day, that Muslim will be taken out of hell, or uh, the anxiety and fear will uh, completely cleanse him, and he will be taken to Jannah. Uh, we promised today to talk about the fourth means, which, subhanallah, brothers and sisters in Islam, is something that uh, I personally hoping uh, uh, to obtain and every Muslim must hope in that but uh, that hope should drive you to work for it uh, what means I'm talking about here that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would forgive you without having to go through any of the previous three uh, means meaning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would forgive you in the day of resurrection without having to endure uh, or experience uh, calamities and disasters in this world, uh, experience calamities and uh, punishment in the grave, uh, experience distress, fear, uh, terror, um, and punishment in the day of resurrection. Uh, I'm really referring to a beautiful uh, means here, which is Allah's pardoning of his servant without uh, having to go through any of that. Allah's forgiveness, subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Al-Ghaffar. One of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Al-Ghafur, the forgiving. And that name is always uh, tied uh, to Ar-Rahim. You always find it in the Quran, the forgiving, the merciful. Brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so merciful. And this is something that a lot of Christians do not pay attention to in Islam. Uh, indeed, uh, the Christians propagating or teaching the doctrine of original sin, uh, the fact that Adam sinned and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not forgive him for that sin, uh, shows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not merciful, is not forgiving. But when we uh, teach that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgiven Adam and Eve, uh, for the sin which they committed, which is eating from the tree, we are in fact teaching uh, the best quality or one of the best attributes or one of the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, which are best for us, of course, the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is forgiving, is merciful. So indeed in Islam we teach something called the original, the original forgiveness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always forgiving, is always uh, merciful. Just to show you this, brothers and sisters in Islam, في صحيح al-Bukhari, hadith Umar ibn al-Khattab, radiyallahu anh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, one day he was standing with his companions, and from a distance, uh, they saw a mother or a woman who was breastfeeding, uh, her baby, whether uh, her own child or another child, uh, but in a way, that scene from a distance, of course, uh, you could sense the compassion and the love that a mother or a woman who's breastfeeding uh, a little uh, infant, uh, you can see that mutual connection, that love, that affection. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam utilizes uh, this a particular scene in a way and he asks his companions uh, uh, do you think this woman at any stage this mother at any stage would throw her baby that infant into the hellfire of course the companions upon seeing the compassion and love and affection uh, that uh, which the mother holds for that baby they said no way impossible the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam right away he holds the comparison, of course, وَلِلَّهِ الْمَثَلُ الْأَعْلَى to Allah subhanahu wa taala uh, belongs the best uh, similitude, the best example. 
uh, we do not resemble Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the humans. Uh, but right away, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is more merciful to his servant than this woman to her baby, to her child. ف, uh, ya ikhwa, look at this hadith. In the day of resurrection, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will speak to each one of us. Yes, I'm speaking to you, dear brothers. I'm speaking to you, dear sisters. قال صلى الله عليه وسلم فيما أخرج البخاري ومسلم من حديث عدي بن حاتم رضي الله عنه The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم says ما منكم من أحد إلا وسيكلمه ربه ليس بينه وبينه ترجمان There is none of you but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will speak to in the day of resurrection You will be called and Allah will speak to you Yes, I'm talking to you I'm talking to you brothers and sisters in Islam فَيَنْظُرُ أَيْمَنَ مِنْهِ فَلَا يَرَى إِلَّا مَا قَدَّمْ He will look to his right and he will see only his deeds ثُمَّ وَيَنْظُرُ أَشْأَمَ مِنْهِ And then he will look to his left and he will only see the deeds which he uh, sent forth for this day ثُمَّ يَنْظُرُ بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ Then he will see, he will look in front of him فَلَا يَرَى إِلَّا النَّارِ He will only see the hellfire at this stage, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, فَاتَّقُوا النَّارَ وَلَوْ بِشِقِّ تَمْرَ Protect yourselves from the hellfire, even by giving uh, a charity the size of half a date. Now, brothers and sisters in Islam, subhanallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will speak to the disbeliever, uh, uh, will speak to the hypocrite, will speak to the disobedient of this ummah. Um, and he will speak to them in a way that is totally different to the believers. Uh, when he speaks actually to uh, these individuals, uh, they will deny. He will actually remind them of their sins. They will deny it. But when he speaks to the believers, they will admit uh, that they committed these sins. Uh, let me take a short break and come back and uh, show you how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will address the believer and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will address the disbeliever, the hypocrite uh, or the disobedient of the Muslims and the consequences uh, of this. Uh, don't go away. I will be right back to share with you what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, will say, uh, will ask each one of those uh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be amongst the believers so that we earn the forgiveness of Allah. Don't go away. I'll be right back. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. should never underestimate the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the tsunami that happened in Japan that killed so many people. It is time for a change. It is time for us to come forth and to make that change, my brothers and sisters. We must enjoin the, the right and forbid the evil in every land, in every Muslim land. We have to go back to the original source. And the original source is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We are actually here in downtown Cairo, Egypt, in front of the 44th Cairo International Book Fair. Assalamu Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Dear viewers, brothers and sisters in Islam Allah's forgiveness is vast Allah's mercy encompasses everyone ورحمتي وسعت كل شيء قل يا عبادي الذين أسرفوا على أنفسهم لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله إن الله يغفر الذنوب جميعا A beautiful hadith في صحيح الإمام البخاري ومسلم من حديث عبد الله ابن عمر رضي الله عنهما The Prophet صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم says يدني رب العالمين المؤمن منه يوم القيامة ويضع عليه كنفة ويستره من الناس ثم يقول له أتذكر يوم كذا وكذا ذنب كذا وكذا فيقول نعم يا رب فيظن العبد أنه هالك ثم يقول له ربه سترتها عليك في الدنيا واليوم أغفرها لك Beautiful, beautiful hadith that brings a lot of hope that ignite the heart with love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala our Lord, brothers and sisters in Islam, is merciful, is loving, is forgiving. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will call upon the believer in the day of resurrection. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will veil the believer from the rest of humanity, the rest of the creation. This hadith, brothers and sisters in Islam, is named or is called Hadith Najwa, the secret talk, the private conversation which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will have with the believers, with the Muslims. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will veil the Muslim, the believer, from the rest of the creation. And he will ask the believer, do you remember on this day you committed that sin? No one saw you, but I saw you. You went inside a room. You googled, you yahooed, you did what you did. I saw you. You remember? Look, the servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will admit, will confess. Brothers and sisters in Islam, this is a key to receive Allah's forgiving. To, see, to receive Allah's forgiveness. This is the key. The key. Remember, brothers and sisters in Islam, I take you back to the beginning of history. Adam alayhi salam disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Satan disobeyed Allah. Satan was commanded to bow down to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to bow down to Adam. And he refused. He said no. Adam was commanded not to eat from the tree. He disobeyed. He ate from the tree. But now is the question, why Satan was cursed, was punished, was dismissed, rejected, kicked out from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Because he never admitted, he never confessed his sin. Why didn't you bow, at, you, you bow, down, why didn't you bow down to Adam? He said, I am better than him. Ana khayrun minhu. Khalaqtani min narin. وَخَلَقْتَهُ مِنْ طِينَ I shouldn't be, you should basically he said to Allah, you shouldn't be commanding me to bow down to someone who's created out of clay when you know that I'm created out of fire. He's basically uh, 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 proving to Allah that he should not be commanding him to do that. هَذَا هُوَ الْكِبْرِ This is arrogance and pride. Look at the end of the day, we are sinners. But if you have the attitude of Satan that you justify your sin, you never confess it, you never admit it. Listen, the fate of Satan is yours, dear viewers, be careful. Because there are a lot of Muslims out there who are guilty of sins. There is brother and a sister who are dealing in mortgage, uh, riba, usury. And you ask them and they justify the sin. They say, I have no other option, I have to do that. Ya akhi, my brother, my sister. Feel the guilt of the sin. And possibly that guilt, if you confess it, if you say, I'm sorry, it's a sin, 
I hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can forgive it for me. I hope that I can come out of it. It's a key. But if you justify your sin, this is the attitude of Satan. Look at Adam, alayhi salam, and his wife Eve. When they ate from the tree, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked them the same question. Alam anhakuma, haven't I banned you? What happened? What did they say? Rabbana zalamna anfusana. Oh Allah, I am wrong. I made a mistake. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Ah. The same exact thing in the day of resurrection. Allah will speak to the believer. You remember on this day. You remember on this day. You committed that sin. No one saw you. I saw you. And the servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, Naam ya Rabb, yes my Lord, I have committed that sin. I admit I did and I was wrong. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask him again and again and again, as many as his sins or her sins are, do you remember on this day you committed that sin? No one saw you. The servant of Allah will say, Naam ya Rabb, Yes, O oh Allah, I committed that sin. Now to the extent that he believes or he thinks that he will be uh, placed in hell, he will perish because he already confessed his sins. But look at the mercy, look at the forgiveness of your Lord, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to that servant, I veiled you in the world. I veiled you. Even so you committed these sins, I have never disgraced you. I never disgraced you. Even so I was able to expose you. Satartuha. I, ex I, I veiled you in the world. And you know what? Today I will forgive it for you. This is what we're hoping at, brothers, hoping in, brothers and sisters in Islam that Allah's forgiveness without having to go through the calamities in the world, the punishment in the grave, and the fear, the anxiety, and the punishment in the day of resurrection, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would pardon us, would forgive us. But I'm telling you, having hope in this particular means for your sins to be expiated, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would forgive it, uh, without having to do anything would require you to work hard, to strive, not to sit and commit sins and hope. Uh, look, التمني على الله, hoping in Allah is different to having wishful thinking. That here you are, you're engaged in sins and then you're able to leave it and you don't even try. You do not even try. You do not even to stop the sin. You do not even try to engage in ibadah. But you're saying, Allah is ghafoor rahim. Allah will forgive me. Allah will help me. La ya akhi. It doesn't go this way. You must strive to do that. Add to this, you must stay away from the injustices, meaning committing injustices against other human beings. Because I want to warn you, brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would forgive any sin which you committed between you and Allah, whether it is uh, a sin which engages you or uh, a sin that infringes your sincerity and devotion to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah would forgive that. As long as you go back, especially if you committed shirk, you go back and you uh, co uh, go back to Tawheed. But if the sin does not engage another uh, creation, another human being, listen, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could pardon you for it. But if the sin engages the rights of another human being, for sure you're going to have to pay this back. قال صلى الله عليه وسلم لتؤدن الحقوق إلى أهلها حتى يقاد للشاة الجلحاء من الشاة القرناء The rights will be given back to those who, uh, to whom these rights belong to to the extent that a hornless uh, 
uh, goat will be given back its right from a horned one uh, which knocked her down. Uh, is shahid or the important thing, brothers and sisters in Islam, that in the day of resurrection, you could hope in the forgiveness and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would forgive you without having to go through the first three means which is calamity in this world, punishment in the grave, and punishment in the day of resurrection. As a matter of fact, if you want to qualify more for that forgiveness, and if you don't want to take your chances once it comes to these first three means in particular, you must come up with the next three means. Istighfar, Tawbah, Hasanat Mahiya. Asking Allah for forgiveness, repenting all the time, engaging in Hasanat, which erases the Sayyat. Insha'Allah, the next three episodes, I will, be ibn Allah Ta'ala, address each one of those individually. If you don't want to take your chances with the calamities in this world, with the punishment in the grave, with the punishment in the day of resurrection, then you have to come up with those next three means, istighfar, tawbah, hasanat. Till the next episode of Path to Salvation, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. To